Hi everyone, day five of our lockdown. I think I might have to go and turn that light off because it's a wee bit too bright and keeps <laughs> doing nasty things to the camera. Um, I, anyhow, it's Monday, the first Monday of the lockdown. Um, it's peeing down with rain outside. So you can see out there it's a, looking a little on the damp side. <laughs> Um, aside from that, uh, I think one day is going to be pretty much like another. Uh, Ian has already tried to get me on the Xbox, but I'm not going on the Xbox yet because in 10 minutes there's supposed to be a free exercise program on the TV. Um, run by Les Mills and hosted by TVNZ and I'm going to give that a go. In my brand new workout trousers that I finished yesterday. So, aren't they pretty? So, the top is a bought one, I'm afraid. Uh, the um, pants are using the green style um, tempo workout trousers and the fabric came from Marvel New Zealand before the lockdown, obviously. Um, I've got enough there already cut out to make one more pair with a different contrast. So the other ones will be a turquoise colour contrast rather than the pink. And we'll have pockets. These ones, no pockets. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough fabric for pockets for these ones. But never mind, it's one of those things. Sorry about the light changing. There's not enough light coming in from outside, but if I turn the lights on in the lounge, we get glare on the screen for you guys, which is definitely not ideal. So, yep, yeah, I got the sewing done yesterday, um, which is good. And I also baked some bread for me, um, which I will just grab that to show you. So here it is. So that is my gluten-free bread. Um, it's got, I think, five flours in it. So I use um, tapioca flour, sorghum, half a cup of each, and also chickpea flour. Um, so that's also half a cup. And then my final half cup is made up of two quarter cups of hemp flour and sunflower flour now several of those i cannot get at the supermarket so i've just got to hope i've got enough supplies to keep me going because i like my bread to have some heft and as well as all that it's also got sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds and chia seeds in it so all of those together make for a nice healthy and rather nice loaf um, but as well as that, after I'd finished brewing my gluten-free loaf, I also made some normal bread um, dough and then formed it into rolls. So we had homemade burgers last night. Um, not gluten-free rolls, because I haven't quite worked out how to do that, because gluten-free dough is not really dough as you know it. It's more like a cake mix, like a batter. So if you try making that into a um, bun... It's just going to end up as a big hot mess. So I haven't tried that. I've just got to work out how to do it. Anyhow, despite the fact that I had gluten yesterday, I'm not, I don't seem to be too affected by it yet. So fingers crossed. If I don't have it too often, it might be okay. We'll see how things go. So anyhow, I'm going to do this workout in a few minutes. Um, try and keep, keep my fitness up. Um, I've got my, it's not a TRX, but it's the same thing, just not that, that brand to set up in the garage. So we've already got a bolt thing in the, that we've attached to a piece of timber on the garage ceiling. And I've just got to actually do the setup part for the, the system. And then we'll have a resistance thing that we can do. Um, still having elbow problems and every so often that goes into 
couple tunnel issues as well. I'm still working on loosening those muscles up as much as I can. Um, hopefully I'll hear back from my physio today as to what happened on Friday. Seeing as I didn't actually get my work, my um, session with them online. No idea what happened. It was supposed to be on Messenger, never got any message. So not even a notification to say, you know, whoops, we missed you or anything like that. Um, they didn't miss me because they had my phone with me the whole time and was keeping a damn close eye on it. So, yep. Oh, and the day before yesterday, I did actually get the veggie garden um, partly weeded. So we can now see all the celery and the spinach and something's been eating my lettuce, some of my lettuces. But three of the plants were still fine, so we had lettuce in our buns last night. Yum. And um, the little green caterpillars have been having a lovely meal of all my brassicas. The good thing is that they seem to be slowing down. I'm getting better growth. I put some neem granules down. So I suspect that the little green caterpillars that I'm still finding are what's left over from the eggs that had already been laid before I put the neem granules down. So I'm still checking them every couple of days, picking anything off that shouldn't be there and squishing it. So it's I've still got aphids as well. Get rid of one thing and something else lands on the bloody plants. Never mind. Um, so I'm squashing them as well. <laughs> And I might make up some soapy water the next fine day. We go. I don't know how long it's going to be before we eat one of those, but at the moment it's definitely pretty soggy. Um, good thing is I'm looking out at, from my lounge window at the moment, and our grapevine this year, all the grapes pretty much burnt on the vine. I'm not sure what happened, but the vine is absolutely covered in little silver eyes. A little, they're a little bird that have a little white ring around their eye and they're absolutely gorgeous unfortunately the cat's look on it is a gourmet help yourself um, cat bar <laughs> but both of them are actually inside at the moment taking advantage of the fact that it's dry in here so it means all the birds are having a wonderful time out there and flying around and eating and they, they always enjoy that grapevine I'm glad that they're still able to do that despite the fact that there wasn't anything edible for us on it so yeah um, today more sewing after I finish my exercises probably um, some more work on my forearms and I am seriously thinking also I'm going to have to increase my estrogen. I've recently increased it or doubled it from 25 micrograms to, on the patch to 50 and I'm still, although the pain at the back of my legs is now gone, I am still getting muscle pain in my bicep area. Um, which is basically, it just feels like it's all locked up, all really tight. So I'm stretching it and I'm doing some um, bicep curls but doing the up part quickly and then taking the down part really really slowly to work the right muscle groups um, so I'm suspecting that I might have to take it up to 75 milligrams I still have some 25 sorry micrograms I still have some 25 microgram patches left so I can try that without having to get back to the doctor and if that works, then I will have to ring the doctor and see if I can get a prescription forwarded to my local pharmacy. The thing is, we're not supposed to be going out. Um, we might just have to pay a little bit extra to get it faxed. So, yeah. Interesting times. Oh, there's goldfinches out there too. All my favourite birds in one place. Well, not quite. I who... Um, Oh, and on the end of last week, I can't remember if it was the Thursday or the Friday, um, we we had a little um, fantail visitor. Now the interesting thing is, it's kind of sad as well, but um, my sister-in-law's mum died earlier last week. And she had a fantail visit her the day after her mum died. And then the day after that... 
Mum and I both have visitors from Fantail. So the Fantail that visited my sister-in-law went into their garage and flew around. And then Mum had one that was flying around their property and flew around her. And then I was out the back putting some stuff in the rubbish bin. And I saw my cat down the end watching something intently, as she does. And I looked and there was a fantail on our Fijoa plant. And as I watched, it flitted around a bit and teased the cat, as they do. And then it came and it flew around me a couple of times. And then it flew off. A very disappointed cat. Um, but when I um, messaged my sister-in-law to let her know, um, she actually said that her mum had actually asked after me quite a lot. So I didn't really get to know her mum very much, but apparently her mum thought that I was worth a visit, which was really rather cool. I mean, it, it's sad that she's gone, um, though I get the impression it was a bit of a release in a lot of ways. But when she visited as a fantail, she was obviously really happy, which was good. Um, and mum said the same. She got a, a feeling of, of happiness. So, and for any who don't know, um, it's actually, I believe, part of one of the Maori um, traditions is that a soul will actually go to a fantail and visit those that they knew and loved in life. Um, I'm sure there's more information on the internet about it. I don't really know a lot because... I don't have any Maori heritage. My sister-in-law does, and her mother did too, I believe, so that would explain it. But it's kind of nice to know that there is something afterwards. Um, I mean, I already believe that there was, although I'm not religious in the traditional sense that I believe in church, I do believe in God. So, yeah, anyhow, that's probably it for me for today. As I said, more sewing today. Um, and I'm probably going to get some more, um, a wee bit more knitting done if my elbows will let me. And maybe even do a little bit of hand carding for Grand Cheer. So have a good day everyone. Stay safe, stay well, stay warm. <laughs> and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.